Hey, it's your friendly neighborhood immunologist, and today we're going to be talking about allergies. And I know personally how much allergies suck. I have had a severe allergy since I was two years old. I've had to watch everything I ate. I've had to carry an EpiPen around, read all the labels. And it's tough. It's really tough to live your life with a severe allergy. So it's part of the reason I actually became an immunologist. And what I want to draw for you today is how your body can form an allergy against something harmless, like a food, like peanut or sesame. And then I'm going to show you which immune cells are involved. And then in a separate video, I'm going to show you how allergy shots work, or at least how they're meant to work in an ideal situation. So let's get started. All right, so allergies actually start with a macrophage. You might not have expected that. And let's say that you ate for the very first time a sesame bagel and scrambled eggs. So there are sesame, obviously this is not to scale, but there's, you know, like sesame seeds intermixed with egg pieces in your body. Now your immune cells like macrophages, they are really good at eating things. They're, in fact, they actually have parts of their cell act just like your stomach. So this macrophage is going to nom on the environment as it's its job, and it's going to grab a sesame and some egg. And then it's actually going to internalize it and this part of the cell is called a lysosome. This is the part of your cell that is exactly like your stomach. It's very acidic and it can break things down into very small pieces. So now you have itty bitty pieces of sesame and egg because that's what you ate. Now, if you were otherwise completely healthy this is what would happen next. You, um, your macrophage would take some of these proteins and they would put them on the outside of the cell. Now why? Why would a macrophage bother to eat things and put them outside of your cell? Because the job here is for an immune cell like a macrophage to basically be doing surveillance for your whole body. It's checking out everything in the environment all the time. When you're eating, when you're not eating, when you're sick or well, doesn't matter. The macrophage is eating things and then it's putting them outside. So for example, let's say that there's now a small piece of the sesame, I'll code that in brown, on the outside of this macrophage. What I'm drawing here is actually something called a receptor it's a small protein that immune cells use to communicate to one another. They don't have words, so they use receptors. And this one has a very, very long name, so I'm gonna abbreviate it. Major Histocompatibility Complex 2. But you can think of this more along the lines of, of like a wanted sign. So they're gonna go see if this profile fits any of the um, wanted signs on the rest of your body. All right, so it's actually gonna travel just a little ways to a lymph node. Now a lymph node is where most of your long-lived immune cells are. Your long-lived immune cells are B cells and T cells. All right, I'm gonna draw a T cell most of your lymph nodes are actually located um, in places like behind your knees, your armpits, your neck, your groin. So depending on where the macrophage found this, it may have to travel a little ways. All right. So here is our T cell. And the T cell is gonna come check out the wanted sign. The T cell's match for the wanted sign is called a T cell receptor. I'll draw this off to the side here. 
T cell receptor. Hopefully that's easy to remember because this is a T cell. And if it's a perfect match, something interesting might happen. So remember, this is the very first time you've eaten a sesame bagel with eggs. And it is pretty random what is put on the surface of your macrophage. The macrophage could have put egg on the surface. It really is just a game of chance depending on what you, what you basically eat the most. blue T cell here. I'll fill the rest in in just a second. So even if this T cell identifies the MHC, which is the wanted sign, under this circumstance, nothing's going to happen. In fact, the T cell might actually become tolerant, meaning it would recognize sesame as safe. So how the heck do allergies form then? I will tell you. The MHC class 2 wanted sign is step number one. When a T cell makes a memory, it's basically the equivalent of like going nuclear. And as you might have seen in the movies, uh, nuclear codes typically need not one but two keys. And your T cells are very similar. There's a second key. Now in the absence of the first key, you don't get allergies. Hooray! But unfortunately, we all experience inflammation throughout our lives, um, particularly when we have colds. But for some children, you might have actually heard that eczema can increase the likelihood of having an allergy. And I'm about to show you why that's true. So I showed you signal one. Now I'm gonna draw signal two. I'm gonna have to draw it out a ways. I guess the T cell's a little farther away than it would be. Now here comes signal two. This is basically, is there danger in the environment? So it's called a co-stimulatory molecule. I'm just gonna abbreviate it, co-stim. Now, if this is present, it means that there's inflammation in the environment. If a person has eczema, that is inflammation. The reason their skin is all red and puffy is because there's inflammation there produced by immune cells. So, in this case, now, let's say this particular person eats the sesame bagel, and now the T cell is a match for the sesame, and the co-stimulatory signal is there. And now, you're gonna have an allergy. It's rather unfortunate. Um, I, yeah, I found out that I had my allergy when I was about two years old, and I have had to watch everything I've eaten. I typically have a mistake every you know, two to three times a year when I was young. And now that I'm older, um, I typically only have mistakes every three to four years, which is much better. And you'll see why each time you have um, encountered whatever you're allergic to, why it feels worse and worse every time. All right, so the T cell has a pretty amazing power of activating the other, um, the other adaptive immune cell in your body called the B cell. So here we go. The T cell is going to activate the B cell. They're actually basically neighbors in the lymph node. Um, we were designed very, rather uh, beautifully in that way. So the B cell is actually right next door. They're like literally just in adjacent neighborhoods in the lymph node. Now the B cell you might have seen this if you've been looking at anything to do with uh, vaccines or antibodies. They're these little Y-shaped proteins. Now they're often drawn on the B cell, but the B cell can also release these into the environment, be it blood or tissue, and they can travel all over your body. Okay, so here is our B cell. Now, this B cell is going to be specific for sesame, which means that anytime it makes an antibody, the antibody is going to be a match for the sesame that you ate. And this B cell, unfortunately, B cells actually have a very long lifespan. A macrophage might live for about 20 days, but a B cell 
a B cell can last for, on the short side, a year, and on the long side, 20 to 30 years, depending on how many times you encounter your antigen. So if you happen to eat sesame a lot on accident, then you would have a ton of B cells and antibodies. Whereas if you discovered your allergy and abstained, you would actually probably have less antibodies over time. All right, so the B cell is gonna make one specific type of antibody. It's called IgE, and it stands for immunoglobulin. And the E actually represents Greek letters, but that's not the important point. The important point is that these antibodies, they're the whole cause of, of allergies. So you really have to have a little bit of bad luck. You have to have inflammation in the form of the co-stimulatory molecule, like those poor children with eczema, that lead to T cell activation. Now, the T cells do have to have a certain recipe here. There's some small molecules that can cause the B cell to turn into the type. There's actually five different types of antibodies, and IgE is the one associated with allergy. And in fact, this will come up in the next drawing that I do for you, because you're gonna see allergy shots working here and uh, here as well. Okay, so now the main cell that causes all the trouble the mast cell. Now the mast cell without B cells doesn't really do much, doesn't really look like much. But it is completely full. If you can look at it under a microscope, it looks grainy because it contains so many tiny particles of histamine. And histamine is what causes all of those sneezing, it causes your blood vessels to open up and bring in more fluid, it causes immune cells to enter and produce inflammation, um, it can even lower your blood pressure, which is why some people faint after having a really bad anaphylactic allergy response. All right, so here we have our mast cell. And it's going to do something rather unusual for the immune system. It's going to wear the antibodies. I really don't think there's any other immune cell in the body that wears something that the other ones produce. And it's actually gonna pretend that it's a B cell. So the reason this whole allergy process takes a long time, and the reason you don't have a bad allergy response from the get-go is because a macrophage eating a particle breaking it down, traveling to a lymph node, telling a T cell to tell a B cell to make an IgE antibody, all that takes approximately two weeks. So these granules of histamine aren't ready to go for at least that period of time. Okay, now I'm gonna show you what, what the mast cell does. The mast cell is going to grab and wear the antibodies produced by the B cell. Yep, they're gonna wear them. And every time you encounter your antigen, things are gonna get worse, and I'll show you why. Now, it's wearing maybe half of the antibodies available in the environment. So the next time, two weeks later, you remember how delicious that sesame bagel was. You go back and you eat another one, but this time your body has mast cells ready and they're gonna bind to the sesame. And in fact, they actually have to cross-link, meaning two of the uh, receptors have to bind the sesame at the same time. But now it is, it's histamine city. All of the histamines are going to dump out of this mast cell. And it's not just one mast cell, it's thousands of mast cells. And usually they're located in your mouth or in your intestine, which is why you immediately feel so unwell and why people with anaphylactic allergies feel that, that terrible itchy throat tightening 
like you just drink acid kind of feeling. All right, so histamine right here. is basically gonna cause the allergy. And now you know that all of this is a bad luck situation. Basically, the macrophage eats something on any other day, on any other day without inflammation, nothing happens. But during periods of inflammation, like colds or eczema, the whole immune system, the T cells, the B cells get activated, which can then promote the mast cell to wear these antibodies. So every time you eat that sesame bagel, there's more. There's more antibodies. And then the mast cell can wear more antibodies. And that's why every time the allergies can feel basically worse and they can even happen faster because the mast cells are already geared up. They're ready, they're wearing all of their tactical gear, which are antibodies in this case, and they're gonna drop histamine, which is going to cause all of those body changes that you feel during allergy. The itchy eyes, the runny nose, the scratchy throat, even the hives on your skin. This is how the whole process works. All right, there you have it. Allergy is basically your body mistaking something harmless, like milk or peanut or sesame, and thinking it's a bacteria or a virus, and then making a long-term response, including antibodies, which will activate those mast cells to drop all their histamine and make you feel awful. So if you want to know more about allergy, specifically how allergy shots work, I'll have a video up for that next week. And until then, stay healthy.